Today I'm finally going to clean up the rat's nest of cables around the llama's lagoon. Let's go. What's up coral people? If you're new here, my name is Remy and this is the Bahama Llama Coral YouTube channel. Before we get to the meat and potatoes of this week's video, if you could be so kind, go ahead, like, subscribe, and hit the bell notification so you're notified whenever I upload new videos. With our reef tanks, there's always those things that continually get put off. And that could be a multitude of things. Commenters have told me about this. Uh, good reefing friends here in the St. Louis area have told me this. And now, Jake Adams from Reef Builders has told me this. So guess what? We done fixed it. The rat's nest of cables and cords and gadgets and electronics is very common in the reefing hobby. And yes, Jake is right. It is also very dangerous. As hobbyists, we tend to get into the rut of thinking that the rat's nest is just okay. And people like me dismiss it in public on YouTube and over time that positive reinforcement just makes people think that it's okay. I gotta be more responsible when it comes to things like that so let's go ahead and solve this problem. Real quick why do we have a control panel? Well I think first and foremost it gets the rat's nest off the floor and it gets it kind of organized and up on the wall above everything else. It also gives you easy access to all those things you gotta bend over for to turn off and turn on again and gives you a good heads up visual display of what is running in your tank at all times. You know, for this build, you're not actually gonna need a lot of stuff. Step one is gonna be to determine how much you need to mount. For me, this was pretty light. I had the power strip, I've got the return pump controller and the thermostat for the heater as well as a UV switch and one power brick for the Radeon. If you built stands in the past for your aquariums, you probably have some scrap wood in your garage that you can use in this project. I used a small section of three quarter inch plywood and some of the scrap wood from my son's reclaimed wood wall. It should also be very apparent to carpenters that I have no idea what I'm doing here and I don't have a lot of experience when it comes to woodworking, but I'm trying. If you've got some basic tools, you should be able to accomplish this. I used a jigsaw and a small circular saw to cut the pieces. And the color choice for me is just straight black. You can actually have some fun with this if you've got a color scheme that is surrounding your tank. If you've got an Apex or a GHL controller, you kind of have a color scheme right there with that orange with the apex. I've seen a ton of really cool color matched cabinets and control panels. So after a little bit of research, I went to the hardware store and I picked up some furniture hole covers. I'll use these as a clean way to get the wires from the front to the back and vice versa. When you're laying out your controller board, get some construction paper or just a piece of paper and trace out each one of those controllers that you're gonna be mounting to the front of the board. Obviously, you're not gonna be able to uh, work this out right next to your tank if you're cutting holes and you're doing all that stuff, so this makes it a lot easier for you to continue running your tank while you're doing all of this out in the garage or the shop or whatever. So once you've got all those traced out and cut out, you can go ahead and start arranging those on your new controller board. This is gonna give you a great idea on the layout that you'll wanna go with your board. And once you've decided where you wanna put everything, go ahead and start drilling out those holes. A two inch hole saw will be right for the two inch furniture hole covers. I wasn't sure if there would be some sort of conversion here because the it seems like the outer part of the hole cover is a little bit wider than the inner part, but it is true to that inner part, which is two inches. It was actually a little bit loose, and I think that's probably from me wobbling around a little bit as I was drilling out those holes, but I used just a little bit of super glue on the inside of these hole covers to make them stick in. I also made this mount to uh, adhere to the wall. It's basically two pieces of the same plywood that I used for the front of the controller board sandwiched together and leaving a space on the back side of that so that the controller board will just fit right in there. I also used another piece of that three quarter inch plywood to make a lip on the controller board. It was super easy to make and now if I ever need to remove the board or access anything from the back of the panel, it'll be super easy to get off the wall. All right, now that the holes are drilled and everything's ready to go, it's time to start setting this bad boy up. Now you'll wanna make sure that you're ready to kind of move quickly once you've unplugged the power strip from the wall because you're gonna have to unplug every piece of your aquarium to run it through the new board. So this part, 
was kind of a task. I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. It's not a whole lot of fun knowing that you're on a time crunch and not having anything labeled when it came to this part was a little tricky, but I got it done. And it's also saying a lot because I'm not really running a whole lot on this tank, so I can't imagine what it would be like if you have a gigantic system with a whole bunch of things. You're really gonna have to plan this out if that's you. I'm kind of worried about when I do this for the frag tank because there's so many more pieces of equipment that are running on that tank. This is also the part where you'll wanna beat yourself up for not doing this sooner. If I had more time, I'd make this prettier and I I will definitely lay out a plan for the next time that I do this, knowing what I know now. As I've said in the past, do some research and then actually follow through and do it. You will mess up. You will botch measurements. It's all part of the process. You learn and then you get better for next time. So here it is today. This is the new controller board. It really cleaned things up a lot. Everything is off the floor now, which is fantastic. And I have some peace of mind in that regard. And it's no longer a distraction from all of the beautiful coral that is in the lagoon tank. Matthew from My First Fish Tank did a control board video last week, and you should go check that out. I'll link it below. But he actually had a prefabbed control board that he got from Marine Depot. So so all he pretty much had to do was just pick a spot on the wall, mount it, and wire it up. Now you'll definitely pay for the convenience of someone doing the board for you, but if you're on a time crunch and you just don't wanna deal with it, this is a great way to go. Decide what option is better for you, whether you wanna DIY it or if you just wanna buy it and go for it. Cable management is probably the easiest thing to put off unless you're OCD and then you've had your cables managed from the beginning, but I tell you what, it looks so much better. And it kind of gives you that cool control room look in your fish room. So thank you to those who commented as well as Jake Adams from Reef Builder for giving me the kick in the pants that I needed. Now for the frag tank. As you can see over here, that tank is gonna need it's gonna need a little TLC. It's gonna need a little extra loving. That will be another video for another day. Do you have a rat's nest or are your cables nice and managed? If your cables are nice and managed, what is one product that you used in your cable management that you swear by? Please leave that in the comment section below. I've got some big decisions to make. I know we've mentioned and talked about the frag tank a couple times here. Uh, it continues to be the bane of my existence where the lagoon tank is super fun to take care of the frag tank is like there's always something you know what i mean i'm thinking maybe i just need a whole farm more rather than less it makes sense right sometimes i get so jealous when i see the big farms on youtube like what if i could just do that just all day long go check out what's cooking on the osa channel as always they've got tons of stuff from their farm they posted this rock flower rock recently and it is just beautiful i love rock flower anemones i think they don't get as much love as they deserve they also just posted up a bunch of leathers that they fragged up hit up scott crow or the crew if you see anything that you like from their videos, I'm sure they can hook you up. And as always, follow OSA on all the socials. I'll leave you with this. I recently met a hobbyist here in the St. Louis area named Don. Him and his wife met me at the Corner Reef and I got a brand new leather to me. And it really looks a lot like the weeping willow that I have. I don't know, go ahead and decide for yourself. Here's the side by side on the left. That is Don's frag that I just got. And on the right are some small frags of the weeping willow. It looks to me like the polyp stalks are about the same length. I will say this though, they are both frags, so they're not mature colonies yet, but there is an amazing amount of similarities between these two. I'm just happy to have both of them in my collection now. It's always fun to meet hobbyists in the area. So Don, if you're watching, uh, I really appreciate it. All right, guys, that's it for me. Hope you're staying safe and we'll see you next week with another video.